Yeah, right now, I mean, uh, their list is out. I mean, Steve's on uh, the concussion protocol, and, and uh, so we'll have to get through that. And then um, uh, Lingan with his foot, he'll definitely be out this week. The word is that Lingan could be out the rest of the season. He said, I don't know that for a fact, so I'm not going to comment any more than that, you know. One thing that we heard from the players is on Sunday you you addressed them and reminded them of, of Illinois a couple of years ago. What was the, the point of that message to them? I'm, I'm, you know, I just think that uh, you try to learn from the past. You know, thought we could have played better. And uh, obviously they played better than we did. And, you know, but again, we competed hard, had a chance to win. But same thing, you know, we've proven that, that we could win there too because uh, a couple of years back before that, we were able to win on the road. So, uh, but I don't think it, uh, it ever hurts to, you know, you try to learn from the past and not repeat it. One thing that you, you talked about was the 2012 game earlier this year there and getting the bowl eligibility. Uh, was that a, a particularly special one in your time here? Yeah, I think so at that time, you know, and, and uh, to get uh, bowl eligible, I think that was our first bowl game then that we were able to go to since we've been here. So, um, but, you know, the specifics I don't remember. I'm not very good about that, but I do remember that. It's getting bowl eligible. Tracy, uh, Rutgers uh, played you guys close. Um, you lost to Penn State. Penn State beat Ohio State. There, there's examples all the time about that. Uh, Kind of the evenness or parity in uh, in the Big Ten in the Power Five conferences in college football, and it, it's been in place. Uh, it seems to me for a number of years. But it, is it even trending more so in, in your opinion uh, this year? Uh, the amount of parity. I, I think it's been the last few years. I mean. I just think each weekend in the last few years you can look and there's going to be eight to ten games that kind of surprise you what what happens if you go by every, all the information that's out there before the game is played. And so um, I think that's a good thing, you know, and, and that uh, I do believe that that uh, whoever prepares the best and and um, shows up and plays hard and makes the fewest mistakes will, will have a chance to win each week no matter who you play. And, and uh so, um, well, like this week, we'll have to make sure we're ready to go, and and uh, um, that's why it's uh, and and you know in college football, it, every game pretty much counts, you know, towards the end, and so I think all that um, leads to all the interest and excitement to it. What accounts for it more than anything? Are there just more good football players available to more people than there ever have been before? Uh, I, I, you know, it's a good question. I'm not for sure. You know, I really don't. You know, I think, like I say, I think sometimes all the social media. I think that sometimes that um, kids read things and try to make up their mind before the game's played who's going to win or lose, and I think that can affect your preparation during the week. And so, uh, uh, but but I, I'm not for sure on on all of it. You know, I do think that kids are being trained and better in, in high school and stronger and and. Uh, um, so I do think there's a good core of, of players out there coming out of high school, and, and everybody's getting their share, good ones. Trace, uh, you talked in the offseason about getting your best players on the field and be, with Shannon and Rodney in the same formation sometimes. Um, just are you pleased with how you guys are integrating that and how it's worked out so far? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they plays. What what does he allow you guys to do schematically that maybe helps him in run support or maybe helps change coverages up or slant coverage one way or the other? Um, you know, you just like to have your best players out there, and we always have built things around trying to get the D line to where to where it can be um, better than most of the people that we play and and uh, and the in the corners. I mean, it's just not just him, but anybody. If you can. If you can take away that part of it, then you know you can obviously outnumber them in the box and to help you on the run and and uh, worry about other pass people. So uh, he's just one of our eleven best players, and and uh, we we count on him. And and uh, and when he's available to us, then you know we can do all the things we want to do. And obviously, when he's not. I mean, we, we can't force people to do things that they're not good at, and so uh, it changes a little bit in what we do. 
uh, Illinois uh, has a standout pass rusher. Um, is there anything that you do differently with him, slide the protection, chip it back, anything like uh, that? If there was, it's our, I wouldn't talk about it, you know, so. We just got to protect, which we've done a good job all year. I, I don't know. We haven't given up very many sacks yet this year. So, but he, he creates a challenge. Uh, with Shannon and Rodney, I mean, last year they, they were dynamic too, but they they were dealing with some injuries too. Would you say that, you know, the numbers that they put up last year could have been comparable to this year if they had been healthy? I don't know. Oh, yeah, they're good. I, and you should get better each year, so. You know, they've been able to stay healthy, and they're good backs that run tough. You know, I don't know how it compared to last year though as much. With uh, Rodney returning kicks, is that at all like? I mean, obviously you saw what he could do, but do you have to balance that with you know trying to keep him healthy? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I mean he's on a couple of the special teams things and that, but uh, I don't I don't think he's. <laughs> He's uh, over. He worked, and, and and he wants to do those things. So that's a good thing. Is uh, Keontae going to take Jalen's spot for turning kicks with his side against Maryland? Uh, I don't. I don't know. You know, we'll see how it goes in practice this week. Was uh, the package with them, uh, Rodney and Shannon in the in the backfield together? Was that something that Jay came up with? Where did that kind of originate? That package? I, don't know. I mean, I said all along we were working on doing that. You know, so I, I don't. Um, um, so in that room somewhere, you know, it came out. Is it is it one of those things where you guys have to last week have to prepare for unbalanced? Do you feel like that kind of allows other teams something that they have to uniquely prepare for? Oh, I think so. I think so. Yep. I mean, you worry about all of a sudden now uh, one of them's not in the backfield and you get a linebacker on a running back and those guys that run pretty good. So I, I think that it's one thing that the. You know, definitely they have to take time each week and, and prepare for. Trace, we can get focused on statistics a lot with D linemen. I don't know if it's always revealing, but Hank Ekbay's numbers are, you know, off the charts this year compared to previous years. Is that also a sign of how well he's playing? Yeah, yeah he's played pretty good. And, and um, you know, seniors say all the time, you know, your seniors got to play well. You're going to have good seasons. Your seniors got to play well. And, and uh, Hank's done awfully. Been his most productive year, you know, since he's been here for whatever reason, and so uh, it's definitely helped us out. Coach, you have five guys over at the courthouse today fighting these, these court orders, restraining orders. Is that at all become a distraction with your team? The judge putting off a decision for another week. Does that kind of cloud the locker room or do anything to make your job more difficult? No, no, it really doesn't. You know, and um, no, you know. You, we just prepare for the games and move on. Thank you, Justin, over here. But with putting Harden back in as a starter as he as you hit the road, uh, can you elaborate to, to at least our viewers at Fox 9 about how that decision gets made? And we're going to play our best 11 who are eligible to play, period. Are you surprised at all about the turnout on Saturday considering it was homecoming, beautiful day, and it didn't seem like there were tons of bucks in the suits? No, I don't have any. All I, all I can worry about is how many games we win and how well we play. You know, so that's that's the most important thing to me. Is it frustrating you? No, no, not at all, not at all. Coach, what's about about Illinois? Just the fact, you know, defensively they're going to put a lot of guys in the box and and uh, they're going to make you throw the ball. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we can't get one-handed, and, and that's all we do. You know, so we're gonna have to execute in the throwing game, and and to still be able to to run the football. And then uh, offensively, it's just you know they they do spread the field, and they got two backs that are really good, and a big physical receiver. It's played well, and uh, but you know each they played three different quarterbacks now because of injuries, and so finding time in practice, they they all do something a little bit different, and and so. Uh, just find enough time in practice to make sure we're prepared for all of them. Yes, I don't, I don't, how do you keep you guys focused with people asking you about the, the fans in the stands and the training orders and even the injuries? How do you keep your players who are playing focused on Illinois? You know, I just say when they show up here to the building is that uh, and it's time to do football, they concentrate on football. And they've done that. We practiced well last week. Um, our kids prepared well. I think the way we come out of the gate shows that they were ready to go. And uh, 
so it's it all comes down to controlling things you can control and and uh um, it, it's a it's a tight group and and um been very pleased with the way that when they show up here for the building to work on football, they've been extremely focused. Tracy, you got about a half a dozen true freshmen that have really played quite a bit and made contributions. Are you su surprised even to the extent that, that they've contributed? And is this freshman class, do you think, uh, maybe going to turn out to be an exceptional one for you and some of the other guys play? You know, they're, they're going to have to stay healthy in that. And, but, uh, you know, where they've helped us and – is in the special teams, you know, the most, and in special circum, uh, special situations in the game. And so, you know, I, I think any time you can do that, we've been able to take some special teams reps off of some of our older kids, and I think that helps as the season goes on for wear and tear. And, and uh, so, um, you know, we knew they had the athletic ability in that, but you never know mentally how they'll handle it. So very pleased for them and, and uh, you know, it's exciting this year and it's exciting for the future when, when you have kids that are that productive when they're that young.